know exactly what you're thinking. I'm reviewing the Heroes of Olympus again. Well, no, and yes. Today, I am here to do something completely different. Hello, fellow bookquesters! It is I, Aaron the Bookquester. Today, I am here not to review some books, but to show you and to tour you along of the Greek gods that appear in the Percy Jackson series, the Trials of Apollo series, and of course, the Heroes of Olympus series. So, well, let's get right on to it. So, first of all, I'm going to talk about the 12, or is it 13 Olympians? Now, now, we all know our gods. Let's start from the start, shall we? So, at first, there was nothing but black black and then there was light and etc etc that's how the bible goes right well in greek mythology that darkness has a name it's called chaos and it is the first god that ever existed the entire world of nothing chaos then from chaos there was gaia the the earth goddess and she was extremely powerful and created uranos and gaia and uranos had kids together but we'll talk about that later. And after that, well, then, you know, Gaia, then Chaos thought that he was having fun, you know, creating new gods and new things in his in absolute nothingness. So he just decided that a huge dome over the earth, except that it is under the earth, would be cool. So he created Tartarus, the eternal pit, where all monsters strive. Interesting, huh? Then, of course, Gaia got her new children, the Titans. And, yeah, the Titans are pretty, like, violent. They're kind of, they're gods, sure, they're mortals. But they're more rougher, and they're a little bit more, let's say, cavemen than the gods that we know about today. So the Titans were kind of big, bad, and evil. And Kronos, the king of the Titans, the lord of time, diced up his father Uranos to take his place as the king of the titans and therefore the lord of the cosmos. Of course, he was destined to be overthrown. The son, the sons and daughters of the original Rhea and Kronos were named gods and they were extremely powerful and because of that, because of the threat, Kronos gulped them down. Yeah, he's a cannibal. But one guy just survived, and he was named Zeus. Short, um, long story short, Zeus was the god of thunder, the lord of the skis, and he had he made web cool weapons for himself. He tricked Kronos into barfing up his brothers and sisters, waged war against the Titans, won, created Mount Olympus, and became the Olympians, the first gods who would rule the universe. And so the Let's talk about these gods. The original, let's say, six who were barfed out from Kronos, the original children, the first generation of the Olympians are Zeus, the king of the gods, Poseidon, the lord of the seas, Hades, the god of the underworld, Demeter, the god of agriculture, Hera, the goddess of marriage, and I believe Hestia, the goddess of the hearth. Now, these god, god, gods and goddesses are known as the original Olympians, or that's what I like to call them. Then, of course, Zeus had a lot of kids, and a bunch of new ones popped up. And I got them listed right here. Hermes, Apollo, Artemis, Hepatus, Aphrodite, Ares, and Dionysus. Now, when Dionysus came along, Hestia gave up her seat in the Olympian Council for Dionysus to be... A Olympian. So basically Hestia fades away into the darkness and doesn't really show up in the myth after that. And yeah, we have the 12 Olympian gods, the major ones that everyone seems to know about. So if I just explain, Hermes is the god of stealing and he's also the messenger of the gods. Apollo, meanwhile, is also a pretty cool guy and he is the god of many things. Archery, healing, singing, poetry, the sun, etc, etc. He, he's annoying. And of course, Artemis, who is, the, who is the sister of Apollo, the goddess of the moon, goddess of maidenhood, goddess of hunting. Hepatus, 
is the god of blacksmith, and he's a really cool man. And he creates all sorts of cool stuff, and he has a really crazy myth. Aphrodite, meanwhile, is the last child of Uranos, the eldest Olympian. When, when you know, um, Kronos went all dicey dicey time and chopped up Uranos, his body parts went down into the ocean, and from the foams came Aphrodite, so that's pretty much it. And yeah, that's pretty much it with Dionysus and Ares, who, who is like the official son of Zeus and Hera. And yeah, that's pretty much it for the 12 Olympians plus Hestia, as I like to say it. And of course, these major gods show up a lot in the on the Percy Jackson series. Percy is the son of, as we all know him, Poseidon. Annabeth is the daughter of Athena, the wisdom goddess, also one of the 12 Olympian gods. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And a lot of the gods we meet, like Travis Stoll, Luke Castellan, um, kids of Hermes, kids of Apollo, who are good at archery, etc, etc, etc. And, well, these demigods, they show up, and these gods themselves do show up in the Percy Jackson and Heroes of Olympus series, and so on. Now, before I move on to the minor gods, I want to explain the Greek and Roman aspects. So, if I go really, really quick and say all the, uh, well, all the Romanized virgins, Zeus is Jupiter, Poseidon is Neptune, Hades is Pluto, Demeter is Skurs, well, however you pronounce it, Hera is Juno, Hestia is Vepra, Ver I, I forget, Hermes is... Anyway, you get the point, they changed. Apollo was Apollo, and Aphrodite was, became Venus, and etc, etc. But some of the gods retained their original names, such as Apollo. Artemis became Diana, though, and Ares becomes Mars, and Dionysus becomes Bacchus. But Athena, now that is the real problem, because if you were a Greek warrior and you wanted to go fight, who would you pray to? You would pray to Athena, the god of strategic battle. You know, Ares was also the war god. Ares was a blundering war god. He was like, get a sword, kill everything in sight. That was the kind of god he was. Athena was different. She knew strategies. Like, attack, um, flank them and attack them from the front and make them think that it's a direct assault and then backstab them from behind and rain arrows and etc. etc. battle strategies. But the Romans totally just debunked Athena and made her Minerva, a much tamer goddess was absolutely nothing except smart. Yes, yeah, she's smart, we respect her, but she's not really who we pray to when we go to war. She's not a very powerful god. And it's kind of sad, and that's what these doll Heroes of Olympus books where the Roman demigods and the, you know, the Greek demigods, that's where the friction occurs because the Romans, they don't respect Athena as much, and also they think of Minerva as a maiden goddess, which means that they don't, that she doesn't fall in love. Therefore, they think it's absolutely scandalous that a child of Athena actually exists. Um, yeah, then it's one of those really bad things, and Minerva and herself really hates the Romans and pushes the children of Athena, the demigods, to attack Rome. So, duh. And basically, when... The gods became Roman, they became a little more disciplined, more about teamwork, kind of like that, kind of more regal. Ares becomes Mars, and Mars is a little bit better than Ares in a way, because he's more disciplined than just shing, chop, chop, you know what I mean? And of course, there, there, there came some original Roman gods and goddesses, such as Bellona, who is a Roman god of war and etc. I think Pompona is also original Roman god, they don't have a Greek form and the Greek didn't worship them. But yeah, those were two Roman gods and the 12 Olympian gods. So next, we'll get on to the minor gods. Now, I'm gonna kind of like skip through these and kind of show you where they come out from. So, here we go! Hecate! Hecate is the goddess of magic, she appears in this book, House of Hades. She teaches Hazel to manipulate the mist in order to fight the sorcerer's Vasipha and the, the giant Clytius at the doors of death. Nemesis. 
I believe, appears in the in the third book, The Mark of Athena, when the journey of the Argo II actually begins. Nemesis plants doubt in Leo Valdez's head, including a fact that Leo was the seventh wheel, he was useless, he was nothing, etc, etc, good luck was a sham, and basically she was a really depressed guy. guy. Anyway, Minimal Sign, the goddess of memory, she doesn't really come out too much, she is referenced once or twice in the Trials of Apollo series, but otherwise she doesn't really show up. The Nine Muses, the attendants of Apollo, they each are dedicated to some like poetry and as singing, etc, etc. And they don't really show up either, but they are mentioned many, many times throughout the Percy Jackson books and the Olympus books, so I decided to mention them. Pan, the god of the wild. Now Pan shows up in the Percy Jackson series, and by then he's so weak and he is dying, and basically he passes on his message that he is dead and he can't do anything to save the wild and and now it was the satar's responsibility to go around saving the wild and conserving forests it is the gods can't do them for you you have to do them yourself kind of message and yeah nyx is nyx if we're being exact nyx the goddess of the night appears in the house of hades book when you know when percy and annabeth and annabeth fall into Tartarus, they meet Nyx, the goddess of the night. Percy and Annabeth manage to use trickery to get out of their life, but oh boy, oh boy, she wasn't friendly. Fortuna, or Psyche, I don't know what to call her, she is the goddess of good luck. The word fortune comes from Fortuna. And basically, in the... I believe it's the son of Neptune, so they have to fight. They the deadline is that they have to find the giant and kill him and free death, Thanatus, by the way, before this feast of fortune, and that's pretty much the only reference. But we all need good luck, so I decided to put them in. Nike. Now Nike is the goddess of victory, and. She is captured in this book, which is the Blood of Olympus. And the thing is, Nike was absolutely stir stir crazy. Her other part is Victoria, I believe, and she's like just crazy because she's the goddess of victory. The Roman and de- Roman and Greek demigods were fighting, therefore she was super super conflicted and didn't know who to support and whose prayers she should grant. And yeah, that's where Nike appears, and and she forces the Greek and Roman demigods to fight each other, but thankfully they come up with a plan, and Leo traps her in a goddess catching net, and they manage to ship her off before they, you know, she eliminated them all. Boreas. Now, that's an interesting guy. In the first book of the Heroes of Olympus series, The Lost Hero, the cold wind. Uh, Boreas, one of the four wind god- gods of the cardinal directions. Now he appears and he's just super duper annoying. And he and his daughter, Kion, who I'm gonna mention at once, who is the snow goddess, they try to, number one, keep Jason, surf, um, freeze Leo to death, freeze Piper to death, etc, etc. And they were basically just not cool. <sighs> that was a really bad pun. Anyway, Boreas is the cold wind god, and that's pretty much it. There are four wind gods, and I'm gonna just list them now. Zephyros, Notus, and Eros. Now, Notus and Zephyros, they both appear, I believe, in... In... God. In the House of Hades and the Blood of Olympus, so... Um, yeah, in fact, all four wind gods appear as horses in the final battle in the last... And the blood of Lampes. So, yeah, this is gonna be a long video because the list keeps on going. Now I'm gonna skip through some of them. And then there's the King of the Winds, Eldest, who appears in The Lost Hero, where they capture some evil, evil Venti and they return them to our dear Eldest, the King of the Winds, who is supposed to be. who's capturing them as a thank you, and that's where he appears. And then let's speed through the rest of it. Achilles, the goddess of hatred, 
she's just uncool. She appears in the House of Hades, and Percy manages to defeat her using her own poison. Um, she's the god of misery, Styx. Now, we all know the river Styx that runs at the border of the underworld and the mortal world. Styx is actually a goddess, and the goddess of that river is Styx, and the Styx is um, the god of broken oaths, I believe, and... She is very, very, uh, hatredful, because she is also the goddess of hatred. Um, Chemopalea, she appears... Oh, gosh. I believe she appears in the blood of Olympus. She's one of those really, 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 like, evil guys. I mean, she was bribed by Jason so that Chemopalea... Um, so that Kimopoleo would let them go and let their ship go on, and that's where she appears. Oh god, I hope I'm getting the details right. Biometris appears in the... Third... No, the second Apollo book, The Dark Prophecy, where they travel to the cave of Trophonius, and next to it there is the way station, a base for misfit demigods, and etc, and etc. Pretty cool... She's the goddess of nets, and she and Apollo used to flirt with her. Done. Then there's Eros, the goddess of love. You might know him better as Cupid, his Roman name. Now, he's in that pudgy little baby. He's often mistaken for death. I believe he, oh, he, he shows up in the House of Hades. He's evil. And she, he's guarding the, the scepter of Diocletian. And they have to get through him, and Nico faces his fears and his love and his broken heart. And cool. So, yeah, that's where she here appears, and he is not cool. And speaking of death, Thanatos. Percy Jackson leads the quest with Frank Zang and Hazel Levisk in order to rescue Thanatos, because he got chained up for the second time in his life. Thanatos is the god of death. We all know that Pluto or Hades is the god, the lord of the dead. But by the dead, it means plural dead, like the souls of dead people. That's what the Hades is the god, god of. But the person who actually is the god of literal dying, you know, like getting shot, getting cut by a knife, etc., etc., is Thanatos, and he's kind of like the chief policeman of Hades. If you catch that guy, death will stop. That is bad. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it from all the gods I have mentioned. Of course, I have one more to add before... Yeah, I'm sorry, guys. Iris. She is the goddess of the rainbow. In, in basically the entire Riordan Greek Roman franchise, they use Iris messages where they pay a tribute to the rainbow goddess and they can um, FaceTime each other, basically. Magical FaceTime is what you can call it. And she also appears in the set of Neptune, and she advises Frank Zhang and Percy Jackson and heals Percy Jackson on their journey, on their quest to free death. And that is pretty much it. I talked a lot about the Greek gods and Roman gods, and I hope that will help you on your way to read through per Percy Jackson and the Heroes of Wampus. Of course, I got I might have got some of the facts wrong, like Kimopoleia, for example, appearing in the Blood of Olympus. I, it might have appeared in the House of Hades. Of course, it's unlikely, but everyone makes mistakes, right? And like always, your book quester, Aaron the Book Quester. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Read some books. Rick Riordan is good.